Mathematics is irrelevant. Mathematics must die. Mathematics must be eaten and defecated by vermin and then rot in the deepest, darkest pits of hell. In South Africa, when kids reach grade 10, they officially enter the FET phase, or the Further Education and Training phase. The grade 10 to 12 FET curriculum requires learners to take seven subjects made up as follows. Four core subjects which are compulsory. That is, two languages, one of which must be a home language, for example, English, mathematics or mathematical literacy, and then life orientation. Then you have three electives, and these are chosen from the other subjects that are offered by the school. So this could be accounting, consumer studies, physical science, life sciences, visual arts, it goes on and on. You can take more than seven subjects. I remember I was pondering taking eight, but with the workload, I'm glad I did not. There is a subconscious and perhaps very conscious pressure on high school learners these days to have their future all figured out. Not only do you need to navigate your way through high school, but you also need to find an answer to the question, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? This may seem like a loaded question for a 15 year old, and let's be honest, it is. But careful consideration needs to be taken when choosing school subjects because this choice will impact which career path you will be able to take and it'll also affect the rest of your schooling career after the choice. I remember not so long ago, like three weeks ago to be exact, I was studying for my final matric math exam and I was dead as re-evaluating my subject choices as a whole. Something that got many high schoolers excited a couple years ago was the possibility of not having to take mathematics all the way to matric. Then they changed the rules by making maths compulsory. How typical of them. Mathematics is a compulsory subject in South African schools. That could either be good or bad news to your ears. Either way, the great news is that you've got options, and we're about to unpack them. Whether you're a high school learner or the parent of a high school learner, it's vital for you to know the differences between the different mathematics options on offer. I also want to touch on the long-running debate that time and time again rears its head. Is math literacy all that worthwhile? After all, many are opposed to it, especially our parents because it's supposedly dumbing down our students. I think mathematical literacy has been stigmatized by many people who have no idea what the subject is about. Secondly, math has changed, but not in the way that you think. Before the new curriculum, NSC, was introduced in 2008, learners could choose to take maths on higher grade level, standard grade level, or not at all. The not at all part is the scary statistic. In R. Not Brombash's report on maths and maths literacy, there were as many as 40% of learners who were taking no math at all during the period of 2000 to 2005. Furthermore, about half of the learners who took maths were taking it on standard grade level. Over the period of 2000 to 2005, the average percentage of learners of the entire cohort of matric exam candidates who got a mere pass, just a pass, in higher grade mathematics was a dismal 5.2%. Forcing learners to do higher grade maths in order to keep all options open for tertiary education was a common trend that actually set learners back because failing maths meant that there was no option for tertiary education at all. Hence the introduction of mathematical literacy. Looking at the current situation, there's no longer an option to take pure maths on a standard grade level. Instead, only two mathematical subjects are offered. Pure maths, which is the equivalent of higher grade mathematics and mathematical literacy. It's compulsory to take one or the other. That means that every single matric candidate is now getting some sort of mathematical education. But truthfully, some form of mathematics in school is important because the subject teaches problem solving, reasoning, and the connections between concepts and procedures. So the three forms of math you can choose from are math literacy, pure maths, and technical maths. If you're thinking maths is maths and have no idea why there are three different categories, 
brace yourself. There are differences as well as pros and cons that come with each of these options. Knowing the focus of each of these forms of math will help you make this subject choice. So now let's talk about technical mathematics. So if you fancy yourself a tradesman, then technical maths is for you. This form of maths prepares learners for careers such as an electrician, fitter, turner, and plumber, etc. You will learn how to apply mathematical methods in calculating things like peak current flow in an alternating current network, as well as integration and differentiation. This means also knowing how to apply partial fractions. In other words, it's pure mathematics in a practical way. It's also called applied mathematics because you need to know how to apply the methods to real life problems as opposed to deriving solutions from first principles. In pure math paper one and two, a lot of the higher order questions tend to require applied math in my experience. So one of the pros are that there's a demand for technical skills in South Africa. And the con of technical mathematics is that it doesn't grant a student university exemption and you will only be able to study at a technical college. So you need to be sure a technical career is what you want to do. Now let's talk about pure mathematics. This may seem like the less practical decision as it deals with problem solving, not necessarily encountered in everyday life. Think trigonometry, algebra, basic calculus, etc. Many students pass over and dismiss this subject precisely because it seems as though you'll never need it and it's mathematics for math's sake. Some of the pros of pure mathematics is that learners who take this subject are more likely to be accepted to mathematical and non-mathematical tertiary qualifications than their more practical counterparts. Mathematics also teaches problem solving, which is a soft skill that's required in many careers. This is also the math that I chose and I don't really regret it. So what are the cons of pure mathematics? It's difficult. A lot of students need to take on extra after-school maths lessons to pass. Plus, a mere pass also isn't enough to meet the entry requirements at a tertiary institution and hard work will need to be put in to achieve decent marks. Now let's talk about mathematical literacy. This form of mathematics deals with commonplace problems such as budgeting and interest calculations. In short, it's an everyday kind of maths that most likely 90% of people will ever need in their whole life. What are the pros to mathematical literacy? Well, it's easy to pass and you may look like a genius for hitting 80 and 90%. Plus, you'll actually be able to use this in everyday life, which I feel like is the point. What are the cons to mathematical literacy? Well, while it pushes up matric pass rates and university passes, it's harder to get into university if you take this highly favored of school subjects. Even if you don't know what to study yet, by taking math literacy, you are automatically excluded from degrees such as accounting, medicine, engineering, physics, chemistry, and IT at most institutions. So the biggest drawback that I see is the automatic limiting of your horizon. But if you're interested in a career in psychology, marketing, music, or anything in the arts, math lit is the way to go. So whether we like it or not, our teachers know more about our academic ability than we sometimes give them credit for. When it comes to the choice of math, many math teachers take it upon themselves to advise on which math they think we should do. From what I saw and what they did at our school is, in general, for kids who get 50% for math, they advise them to take math lit. And for kids who get 60% and above, they'll tell you to go to pure math. And for the people in between, so the people who are getting in the 50s, it's up in the air. It usually just means they have to put in a lot more effort when doing pure math. I used to underestimate the advice my math teacher used to give me and these past years have seriously made me appreciate his advice and also regret ever underestimating it. He always used to tell me how much he can see that I'm not really putting in any effort and how I'm just cruising. And I remember he'd always tell me that it wouldn't last and that whatever my average was for math at the time, I should subtract 10% and that's what I'd get in grade 12. 
Throughout my entire schooling career, including grade 10, I was cruising through math and basically every other subject. I wouldn't study for anything and I'd get in the 60s just by remembering what was done in class. And for me, I think the big shift really started in grade 11 and this year in grade 12, where I genuinely had to study for anything and everything. From small assessments, tests to exams. Part of it may also be due to the whole online schooling thing. And there would be times where I studied my ass off and I'd still get destroyed by a math exam. And I would reminisce about the time where I wouldn't even really have to study and I'd get in the 60s. So grade 11 and 12 and maybe even even a bit of grade 10 is very humbling. If you're in grade 8, 9 or 10 and you're watching this video and you're like me and you're just kind of cruising through school, not really putting in much effort, please start doing so now. It's better to put in the effort now rather than later. I only really pulled my socks up in grade 11, which was pretty late, but it's better late than never. And that's some general advice for school and grade 12 in general. So in summary, if you know what you want to do, the decision is easy. Pure math if you want to do accounting, medicine, engineering, physics, chemistry, and IT. Math lit if you want to go into the humanities, law, arts, marketing, sales, psychology, etc. If you still want to do something like accounting, medicine, engineering, physics, chemistry, IT, and you're doing math lit, if the university allows you to do so, they'll generally want a math lit mark of 60 to 70% or more. So if you're a person who knows what you want to do, you alone know which math to choose. AKA, don't choose pure math just because your parents told you so. And at the same time, don't just choose math lit because it's easier. Number two, if you don't know what to do, choose pure math. This ensures that even though you don't know what you want to do yet, it allows you to keep your options open and you have access to the most opportunities and choices given that you're not completely sure about anything. Thanks so much for watching the video and here's a compilation of a bunch of videos of me studying. Her, but he's always known to be someone who's not forgiving, but he always used to forgive her. So it's like, I learned that um, forgiving is the best thing because it'll come back to you if you don't. So yes, that, that is my life lesson from that book. Thanks, Mishka. You can go ahead and present your cat uh, to just one. Uh... Okay, so I didn't get a very long one, as you can see. Um, so... Explain, yeah? A, B, C. And you have a line that's cutting um, the other uh, or two of the sides. And this line here is parallel to one side of the other side of the triangle. So that line Zoom I'm drawn lesson. side A, B and A, C, and it is parallel to B, C. So that's given. <sighs> Study time. <laughs> so calculus differentiation. This is what it is.